everybody. Oh, man, Van here. Well, you know, tomorrow, which is Monday the 27th, I was due to receive my next new pair of running shoes. The all new, well, it's the updated Brooks Glycerin GTS 20. And yesterday, while I was outside mowing my grass, I got a big surprise. On Saturday, a delivery van showed up, and guess what? I got from Roadrunner Sports, my favorite online retailer, a package, a package. <clears throat> so, let's take a look. Let's see. Let me get over here and sit down so we can open this package. Now, I'm not gonna show you all that information, but here is Roadrunner Sports. Um, that's where I buy most of my shoes from because I get, um, I have a VIP membership, which you have to pay for, but I've saved hundreds of dollars um, on shoes. I actually got these shoes with $52 off because of so many shoes that I purchased through Roadrunner Sports. So um, listen, they're not paying me for this. This is not a plug for them, you know, that I'm getting compensated for. I just really like them, so that's why I'm telling you. So let's rip this sucker open. Let's see here if I can get at it. Oh, I just love this. Don't you just love this? Okay, almost got it out of here. All right, all right, all right, here we go. Here we go, here we go. So there you have you have a Brooks Glycerin GTS 20 11 and a half with D, which is my typical width. And let's open up this box and see what's inside. Whoa. Well, this is just some paperwork. You know, you got your order paperwork. You got your uh, Roadrunner Sports Corsa apparel um, kind of plug here. I do have some of that. I have some of their running tights and some of their shorts, and they're pretty darn good. Um, and then you have the nice wrapping here. Now let's open it up for the reveal. Ooh, here it is. Oh, I really like that. You know, it's still a Brooks shoe. So, you know, I'm not going to say it's as stylish as some of the other brands, but this colorway looks pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of like the white midsoles on shoes with contrast to a darker upper. Um, I kind of like this colorway, so not too bad. So here is my new Brooks Glycerin GTS 20. I'm really excited about this because I'm starting my Marine Corps Marathon training block tomorrow. You know, so this is going to be a shoe kind of a max cushion daily trainer um, with some stability features. It's got those um, signature Brooks guide rail uh, features on them. There you have it on the medial side. There you have it on the lateral side. Um, that kind of kind of guides your foot like the bumpers on a bowling lane. So anyway, I will do a first impressions review once I get these on my feet and get a chance to run in them. Um, there's the outsole on that, so just so you can see it a little bit. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but it does definitely look like this new midsole material, and I'm feeling it right now, is a little bit softer. It's a nitrogen-infused midsole from what I understand, but we'll, we'll get into that. Um, but it's a different you know, midsole material than what Brooks has had in the glycerin and in the uh, adrenaline series um, here to four. So anyways, old man Van is pretty darn excited about this. Another pair of running shoes. I know I got a problem, but hey, you know what? It's my problem. I enjoy it. If it makes me happy, then guess what? It's not a bad thing.
everybody. Welcome back to Old Man Van Running. Today, I'm gonna to give you my first impressions review of the updated Brooks Glycerin GTS. The all new Glycerin GTS 20. This is a mild to moderate stability daily trainer. It's a max cushioned, max stack daily trainer. And I'm gonna tell you, you'll find out my first impressions. There have been some significant changes. So let's get out on the road. Old Man Van here. I'm out here taking my first run in the all new Brooks Glycerin GTS 20. You can see them right down here on my feet. Really excited. I'm getting ready to start my Marine Corps Marathon Boston Qualifier attempt training tomorrow. And I really needed a really good well cushioned, max cushioned training shoe to get me through the next 18 weeks. So really excited. Really excited to get started with these shoes and let's get out on the run. Wow, I've just taken a few steps in these GTS 20s, the Glycerin from Brooks. And let me tell you, definitely a bit softer than the Glycerin GTS 19. I love, you know, this new version three of their midsole material and uh, really interested to see how it feels over the long haul, but definitely there's more cushioning there. And it seems like there's more room in the toe box as well. So that's really good. So a little more about this midsole, this DNA Loft version three. You know, I loved the original DNA Loft in the Adrenaline and in the Glycerin GTS 19. What I liked about it is it had softness, but it also, yeah, it had a little bit of spring to it. This version has more bounce to it, more spring to it, and it feels a little softer. So one of the things that we're gonna have to see over time is, does that additional softness, you know, does that impact its durability? The outsole looks pretty much the same, same, but the midsole, you know, will that extra softness lend itself to breaking down a little bit quicker? I don't know. It's the first time this version's been used, so we'll have to see how that works out. But right now my feet feel like, you know, I've wrapped a nice comfy blanket around them and, uh, you know, it just feels really, really good. The stability, it's still the guide rails that Brooks uses. They are not obtrusive, intrusive, whatever term you want to use at all. And I like that. So it's got the feel almost of a neutral shoe, but my ankles don't roll in. Another thing that's pretty cool is although this isn't the lightest shoe, I'll have to go back and double check the weight, but it doesn't feel heavy on the foot. So that's really good. I think this midsole is helping the shoe feel a little lighter than it actually is. So that's good. We'll get into the details when I get in the house and can give you more of the specifics. Hey, so that was a nice little three mile run. Let's call it the Sunday Roast Man Van Oven Run. Cause it's about 90 degrees out here, high humidity. I need to get this run in. So I'm done, only three miles. At a relatively easy pace, obviously. My heart rate was up a little bit because of the heat, but got through it well. Uh, but now I'll go into a nice cool house, take a nice shower, and then strategize my videography and my cinematography and my editing skills for the rest of the day. Really, really good day. Uh, Brooks Glycerin GTS 20s performed admirably. Love the cushion, like I said, out there on the trail or on the road. and. Uh, We'll get into more details, but it was a very, very enjoyable run, despite the tremendous heat and humidity conditions. So 
Thanks very much, let's get in the house. So starting with the price, this shoe retails for $160 US or $159.95. So it's, it's a pretty pricey. It's gone up from last year's Glycerin GTS 19. And you know, with everything, inflation is hitting us, right? So the price of running shoes is increasing, even daily trainers. So the weight, this is a little heavier than last year's version. It's 10.9 ounces in a men's size nine. Although, as you saw in my out on the road video, it doesn't feel that heavy, even though it's close to 11 ounces. Now, heel to toe drop. Typical of the Brooks Glycerin series, the Glycerin GTS 20 has a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop. The stack height in the rear foot is 38 millimeters and the stack height in the forefoot is 28 millimeters. 10 millimeters is the max heel to toe drop that I will wear. I used to wear the Adrenaline series, which was 12 millimeters. Tried them again and because most of my shoes are in the eight millimeter or even less down to five millimeter heel to toe drop, I just can't wear uh, a 12 millimeter heel to toe drop anymore. So the 10 millimeter for me, for those easy runs, those recovery runs, those long runs where I'm more and more heel striking, the 10 millimeter is the max that I'll go with and the GTS 20 stays true to form. Going to the upper, a very, very soft, multi-layered engineered mesh upper. I really do like it. It's very, very comfortable. It's very, very soft to the touch on the outside. Yes, it's got a layer underneath there, but it does seem pretty breathable as well. I went on a very hot run today, had no problem with it. It's just very, very soft and comfortable. There's not a lot of overlays. There's a few little things here, but nothing substantial. The stability features in this shoe are more than enough uh, to keep your foot going down the right track, and they don't need a lot of heavy overlays to add structure to the midfoot. I felt it was true to size in the toe box. In fact, I felt the toe box this year is a little bit wider than last year. And for me, that's really good. This one's giving me a little more room. My toes are able to splay a little easier. And I'm telling you, that's gonna be real good as I start to put a lot of miles on and a lot of stress on those toenails. So I'm really looking forward to running in this and being able to relax my feet while I run. Moving to the heel and ankle collar. Again, very, very well padded. No issues there at all as far as comfort's concerned, right? Well padded. I have no heel rub um, and it just feels real luxurious. Going to the tongue, again this year it's well, well padded. It's not fully gusseted. Um, it's not like a lot of the shoes where it's you know gusseted all the way up to the top here, but it stays in place. It's very well padded and I really, really do like it. Sock liner again, very comfortable, uh, really fits good. Also, there's plenty of arch support. Moving to the laces. Laces again, very flat laces like I like them. Very little stretch to them, which again is something that I like. Um, I found they were long enough so I could double lace them even though I used the marathon lacing here. So that's really good. I got a very, very good lockdown with this shoe. And, you know, I was able to get a lockdown in the midfoot uh, and in the heel and I didn't have to cinch it too tight, which sometimes I have to do with these thick padded tongues. And this time I didn't have to do that and I didn't get too much pressure on the top of my foot. A little bit with the GTS 19, I have a little more of a struggle with that. So this was really easy today. I didn't get that extra pressure on the top of my foot. So real good job, Brooks. Moving to the heel counter, plenty of structure there, plenty of structure in the heel counter. Uh, but again, it's not so stiff that, you know, it causes any problems. It's a real good lockdown in the heel. My foot didn't move around at all in this shoe. Um, throughout the shoe, I would say this is true to size. And, you know, it just really fit well, at least for my feet. Going to that midsole, okay? Like I said, it's that DNA Loft V3 version 3, which is nitrogen infused really really good feels softer to the touch um, and it 
it, it felt definitely felt softer out there on the run, but it also had more of a bounce than the previous regular DNA loft that was in the GTS 19 and the previous GTS versions along with the adrenalines. It's got a much wider footprint than the GTS 19 and that's across the full length. Actually, we'll go here. The full length of the midsole, that gives you a much wider base when you have softer midsole material and a higher stack height you know, that can create a little bit of instability there. And, you know, Brooks, with these guide rails that they have, um, which is their stability feature, those are not like a like medial post, a big block of plastic. So, you know, those just gently guide your feet. And with that softer foam and with that higher stack height, you want to have a wider base to keep that shoe planted and keep your foot planted and preventing that excessive roll in. And I think Brooks has done a great job of that. That's something you see in shoes like the Hoka line. They're typically very wide based and very, very, you know, cushioned and high stack height. Good job, Brooks. Moving to the outsole. There's plenty of rubber in all the right spots. Um, there are maybe not as prominent flex grooves in the forefoot as I've seen before and in last year's version. Uh, it is flexible, but it's not overly flexible. So there's a little bit, you know, a little bit of stiffness there, not too much. You, you can bend it, um, but there's more midsole material here. So, you know, that's going to make it a little bit tougher to flex. Um, the flex grooves, like I said, are not as substantial. So this shoe is actually gives you more of a rolling sensation through toe off than a flex you know kind of push it's a really smooth ride i felt hitting in the heel and then just going through the gate cycle i had no problem in fact um, last year's gts 19 felt a little clunkier in that respect so whatever you did brooks you know is it the midsole material that's just you know creates a just smoother transition through you know it just felt real smooth and it really smoothly rolls you through toe off. So a real good run today. First run in the Brooks Glycerin GTS 20. I don't even mind this colorway. You know, it's not the most fashionable, but hey, you know, it's a little bit better than their previous version. So that's good. There's a little bit of color there and I'm, I'm liking more color as I, as I run more. So how would I score the Brooks Glycerin GTS 20 on first impressions? Well, I'm going to give this shoe a 9.5. I'm going to start there, 9.5. Everything about this shoe is, is excellent. Um, the first three miles I've run in it, I kind of wanted to put that shoe on and just keep it on all day. Felt like a nice, nice, you know, nice. It felt like a nice blanket, you know, to put around. It's just really, really comfortable. 9.5, I think that's great. It could run even higher if it gets really good durability. One of the things that I'll have to see over time, I've got well over 300 miles in the Glycerin GTS 19. I'm really interested to see how this midsole with more cushioning holds up over those miles. So thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down's okay. But please, good, bad, indifferent, please leave comments and Old Man Van will make every attempt to respond to you in a timely manner. I don't think I've missed anybody yet. And remember, subscribe to the Old Man Van Running Channel. Hit that notification bell, you will get notified when Old Man Van posts more shoe reviews, gear reviews, and more installments of its Boston Qualifier Attempt Vlog Series. So thanks again, and remember, lace up those shoes, and let's get out on the roads.